You are now entering the Rib Zone Sports Show on Fox 5, sponsored by Pueblo Medical Imaging. I'm just so extremely proud, you know, to think about um, everything these young women have had to go through. You know, COVID, it's just, you know, Honestly, what a nightmare. I think everyone's felt it, and we're coming up on a year for our country and, you know, in the world, and it's not been fun for anyone. Um, and for young people that just want to play basketball, that just want to be together, you know, it's created so many obstacles and challenges. But, you know, we've we've come out better for it, I think, you know, and, and they did not make a, a single excuse all year. I'll say it was, it was a uh, very challenging year, you know, with everything going on, testing every day, wearing masks. Every every one of every one of the guys, you know, really work hard to be where they are right now. So I I'm proud of everybody, like every single one of us, the coaches, the the the, the players, everyone. To go through what we had to go through every single day in and day out, we had to figure out whether we were gonna practice together or we were gonna have to service each other every morning. So to have to go through those hurdles um, together and I think um, we'll, 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 be, uh, we'll be better for it. You know, I'm proud of the staff and what they've done. It's been a challenging, uh, it's been a challenging 11 months, but these 70 days I think are going to be really, really prudent uh, for us moving forward and laying the groundwork. The record we had last year was unacceptable, and you got to look at that. That's that's like our identity, and as of right now, from the outside looking, that's our identity. We know what we can be as a team and we know how we can compete and stuff like that. We got to build a new identity for this school and this, for this program and for the you know future levels ahead of, you know, in the, in the near future and stuff like that. So you want to actually like look at the past and not live in it too much. Me and Kenny here. Hey, Kenny. We uh, we just got the phone with uh, President Whitfield and Desiree, and they've asked us to stick around, be the next head coach. Hey, hey that is fantastic. Yeah. So. Uh, hey, congratulations. <laughs> she looks thrilled, but. Yeah, she's a. Uh, I'm not sure. She's yeah. She's been good. <laughs> wow, well, that is great, great news. Yeah. You're ready to do this. Hey, how about some breaking news on the last Reb Zone of the season? Congratulations to Kevin Kruger, the new head coach of the Run and Rebels. The former Run and Rebel just completed his second year as an assistant coach with the Run and Rebels. Kruger played on UNLV's 2007 Sweet 16 team as a senior under his father, former UNLV and current Oklahoma head coach, Lon Kruger. Before returning to Las Vegas, Kruger was an assistant coach for the Sooners from 2016 to 2019. So a familiar face here in Las Vegas as UNLV is excited to welcome Kevin Kruger as the new head coach of the Run and Rebels. Coach Kruger will be speaking with the media tomorrow. So with that breaking news, let's get this show started. Tonight is the last Reb Zone of the season, and man, do we have a lot to talk about. We have a packed season finale tonight with a ton of great guests on. Curtis Terry is joining us tonight, unpacking the Otzelberger news and what's next for the Run and Rebels. Lindy LaRock's former college head coach, Tara Vanderveer, joins the Reb Zone tonight as I get her thoughts on Lindy's historic first season at UNLV. And we'll recap the UNLV football season and sit down with the Chuck Wagon to discuss spring ball and their 2021 schedule so get that popcorn ready sit back and relax and let's get the show started well let's get to the biggest
biggest news of the week, TJ Otzelberger accepting the head coaching position at Iowa State. And let me tell you, Iowa State's athletic director, Jamie Pollard, wasted no time this week. After he let go of Steve Prohm, their head men's basketball coach on Monday, reports immediately followed saying that TJ Otzelberger was the favorite to replace Prohm. Well, just four days later, Coach Otzelberger accepted the head coaching position at Iowa State on Thursday morning. Otzelberger was an assistant coach for eight seasons at Iowa State. He's leaving UNLV after just two seasons, going 29 and 30 with the Run and Rebels, 20 and 16 in Mountain West play. Coach Otzelberger had three years left on his contract at UNLV. His buyout was $3.36 million. Coach Otzelberger was will be taking over a Cyclones team that was 2-22 overall this season and went winless in Big 12 play. Now it's time to bring in a familiar face around here on Fox 5. My man, Curtis Terry, former Runnin' Rebel, now basketball radio analyst for the Runnin' Rebels. What a week, man, what a week. Uh, your thoughts on Otzelberger accepting the position at Iowa State and leaving UNLV after two seasons. I guess this is why they call it March Madness, right? I guess we're living <laughs> it right here in Vegas. Um, unfortunately, not playing in the tournament. But it's it's a tough situation, I think, for UNLV from that standpoint. Obviously, I, I'm excited for TJ, for his family. I think that's obviously awesome for them to be able to go back to where they had so much success, where he was an assistant coach at Iowa State. He was there for about eight or nine years. Obviously, his wife uh, was a basketball star for Iowa State women's basketball team. Um, so for them, it's kind of a home, homecoming of sorts. And so I understand that from a Rebel standpoint, it's disappointing because I think he was the right guy to, to start making the right moves and laying the foundation to get the Runner Rebels back to where they need to be um, and although we didn't quite get there I th think he put us in position to take a couple good steps and now it's about what we're going to do moving forward all right so what are the players feeling right now as a former player how would you be feeling right now heading into this off season what are you what's going through your mind as a player uh, fortunately for me, I never had to experience a coaching change in college. I was able, uh, fortunate enough to play for Coach Sean Kruger for all four years I was a running rebel. Um, but from the standpoint of these guys, I mean, I believe Bryce and Bakke and Marvin, this is going to be their third college coach um, in the time that they've been a running rebel. So I think yeah. from that standpoint, that's tough to deal with, um, especially when they seem like they started to gain some confidence and get comfortable with him. And now you you got to hit the reset button from that standpoint, get a new voice in there, a new leader, and figure out a new philosophy and way to operate and do business. So I can only imagine how tough it is from that standpoint. But then you take a look at the freshmen. I mean, these guys, um, their first season on campus, it's not like they expected. No fans going through a pandemic, basically on lockdown unless they're playing or traveling. And so I can only imagine how tough it is for them to say, wow, our season was disjointed, crazy. And then now our coach leaves and we're kind of in limbo. I'll wrap it up with this, Curtis. What does it say about the Run and Rebels programs for these other schools to look at Coach Otzelberger and former coaches as they get better jobs and, and into Power 5 schools? Well, I, I mean, one thing, obviously, when you have Coach Chris Beard that came here, he left to go to Texas Tech, kind of took his dream job. TJ was here, left, um, obviously, to go to Iowa State, kind of took his dream job. Even my former coach, Long Crew, was here, left to go to the Big 12. Um, I, I, and people will say it's cliche or it's just a cover up to, for, how, for how things are really going. But I think it's a good thing anytime people want what you have. You're clearly doing something right or you have the right person in charge. It's just a matter of if you can do enough to keep them there and entice them. Um, but also, it takes time for that, for those things to happen. So I think, like in three, four years, if somebody came calling, maybe TJ wouldn't have been so inclined to leave uh, because he had built such a foundation, been more ingrained in the community. Um, there's a lot of different factors that go with that. But anybody that doesn't want to come to Vegas, they're probably lying to you. It's a great place. Um, it's family friendly. And now that things are starting to open back up because uh, COVID protocols are starting to get relaxed a little bit, um, there's no better place to come to Vegas and to, to be at the Thompson Mac and be a part of the Run Rebel program. Um, and anybody that doesn't want to be, tough luck. We're going to have to kick their butts on the way as, as we climb the ladder back to the top. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Curtis, um, an interesting couple weeks here. You're going to be busy. I'm going to be busy. Um, I can't wait to see you again in person next season. So I'll see you on the road. Take care, Sounds man. Good. Go run the Rebels. All right, coming up next, Lindy Lorac's former college head coach Tara Vanderveer joins us as we unpack Lindy's success in her first season at UNLV. She shares some amazing advice for young basketball coaches. I don't think we have enough time on this show to talk about Lindy LaRock. 
What a story for this Las Vegas native to have so much success in her first year in her hometown in a COVID season. Taking a look back at her season highlights, she's the first Lady Rebels head coach to be named Mountain West Coach of the Year. Her team finished in second in the Mountain West standings. The Lady Rebels posted a school best 9-0 undefeated road record. She finished the season ranked in second for most wins by a first-time head coach. And she's the first coach in UNLV history with an undefeated conference road record. I mean, there's just not even enough room on that monitor for all of that. I had to get her former college head coach Tara Vanderveer's thoughts on all her success in just her first year as a head coach at UNLV. I'm very happy and I'm very proud of Lindy. Um, I think it, I think it almost it's it's extra challenging. You know, the fact that, uh, I mean, to be a coach during COVID is hard enough to, but to be a first year coach is unbelievable, unbelievably hard. So, you know, I got, got to give her a lot of credit. Uh, she's a very intelligent young woman. And, you know, for her team to do so well, that's awesome. Um, I know you guys played each other early in the season, but um, did she ever reach out to you? Did she ever text you or call you just asking for any advice this year? You know, we did keep in touch. I think she probably talked probably more with my assistant coach, Kate. Bay. And typically, Lindy, she gave me advice. So <laughs> I um, I wanted to know what early leadership you saw from her as a player when she played with you? Well, you know, her dad was a great coach and I think that she's been in the gym a lot. Uh, first of all, she, you know, she really, she understands the game so she could be vocal and talk to other players. And we would always have a joke that if we couldn't remember a drill, we would say, we'll ask Lindy, she'll remember the drill, you know, as a player. So, um, you know, I think it's just, um, you know, her, her intellect really stands out. Um, I mean, I think that she's um, she's she's got a, a sense of knowing what she wants done and how to do it, and she'll tell you how to how, what she thinks, and and I think that's good. When players leave your program and, and they go on to play at the next level or they become a coach or whatever they do, what do you hope they move on with? What kind of skills do you hope they carry on to their next job? Well, I think that we try to have what we call the Stanford way, the way to do things. And, you know, you hope that they have integrity. You hope that they're honest. You hope that they're hardworking, uh, that they're team players, um, and that they try to maximize who they are and maximize who, who they're around, bring out the best in other people they're with. So I think probably more than anything, be a great teammate, um, be a great uh, person in your community. Um, be a leader, um, be able to choose right from wrong, um, you know, be honest uh, and trustworthy. So, I mean, I think those are things that we value. Coach, I'll just wrap it up with this. Um, Lindy is so young in her career and, and she's already had a really successful start. Um, what would you hope for Lindy? What would you want to see in her coaching career? You know, what are some words of, of advice for her? Well, sometimes I think that early fast success can be a bad thing because you can become complacent or you can think, well, you have all the answers. And, uh, I, I hope that, you know, for Lindy as a young coach, um, you know, struggle sometimes isn't bad. Um, you know, but I, I hope that she really, uh, is able to, you know, be hungry and want to be a great coach, want to realize that sometimes you more, the more, you know, as a coach, what you realize is the more you know, the more there is to know, and that you just keep growing as a, as a person, no matter how old you are, no matter how well your team did, um, and to, to really, um, you know, to continue to try to improve as, as a person and as a coach. Well, it was just awesome catching up with Coach Tara this week. Well, coming up next, the Chuck Wagon joins us. Aren't you guys so glad you get another year of the Chuck Wagon and his hula dances? We get his thoughts on their winless COVID season this year and what you fans can expect to see from the Rebels in the fall. We'll be taking a look at their 2021 schedule after the break. to see the Chuck Wagon again. He's getting ready for his sixth 
season at UNLV, super senior status. Chuck's taking advantage of his extra year of eligibility after the Rebels went 0-6 this season in a very, very challenging year. We sat down with him earlier this week to get his thoughts on their winless season and a look ahead at their 2021 schedule. What's up, Chuck? How are you? How are you doing? How's your off season going? I'm doing great, honestly. Just, you know, getting back in the weight room and stuff, having a full off season, it feels great. And you can say, like, this year is going to be a big difference because we get a better chance to get to know each other and we get a better chance of, you know, getting faster and stronger with Coach File and <clears throat> his strength staff. And then we also get a better uh, opportunity now being in person of understanding what we got to do as a team this year. What is Arroyo really telling you guys this offseason, not just the new guys that came in? Not to dwell on the past too much, but the record we had last year was unacceptable. And you got to look at that. That's that's like our identity. And as of right now, from the outside looking, that's our identity. We know what we can be as a team and we know how we can compete and stuff like that. We got to build a new identity for this school and this for this program and for the you know future rebels ahead of, you know, in the, in the near future and stuff like that. So you want to actually like look at the past and not living it too much. Well, let's go over the schedule. Um, so you got home at Allegiant Stadium opening up to Eastern Washington. Are you excited to open up the season at home? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited because uh, Eastern Washington, they offered me uh, when I was in high school. So that'd be a little good game. You know, I always get to play against, you know, other opponents than just in your conference too. So you know, it's a great opportunity, a blessing. And uh, looking forward to playing them. They're a great team in the FCS. So I uh, give them a, uh, respect and everything like that. And. Uh, you know, just go out there and try our best to win. And then y'all are on the road at Arizona State, September 11th. So some Pac-12 right there. Are you excited for some Pac-12 action? It's always good playing a Power 5 school. So they're going to bring their A game and we got to bring ours. Simple as that. And then Big 12, Iowa State at home at Allegiant Stadium. That game's going to be lit. Yeah, I, I believe they're going to be ranked or something like that too. So yeah, that would be a good game. I know people are going to be excited to play that game too. You should be playing against a ranked team. So, yeah. And then um, Fresno State away September 25th. All right, UTSA, have you ever been out there to the Alamo Dome? I've been to Texas before, like for about like 30 minutes because I had to stop doing an air, uh, airplane uh, stop. So yeah. it'd, it'd be fun to just, you know, be able to be there a little bit longer, I guess. But they're a great team too. They improved a lot last year. So respect to them. And then you guys got... Utah State, San Jose State at home before you guys head up to Reno. Yeah, the, the, the Reno one, you know, at least we get to build the animosity this year. Like last year, it just didn't feel right, like playing them early. I, I, well, to me, because um, every year we play them at the end of the year. So uh, building the animosity up a little bit more. It doesn't matter when we play them, but uh, this is a little better feeling, you know. So. Everyone is talking about y'all's last game away at Air Force on November 27th. Because it's going to be cold? Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is, but at the same time, uh, I never got to play Air Force, so it's a good, it, you know, it would be a good a good feeling just to be able to, you know, finally play, play them and everything. And then... Um, might be might be a short game. We both run the ball, honestly. Because, <laughs> you know, they don't really like to throw that much, but uh, it should be a good game. That's a that's a that's a in the trenches type game. So looking forward to that. I might have to have you run out in the tunnel with us and everything the first game. <laughs> the crowd going. That'd be bad. <laughs> That'd be so bad. I'd be like, okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, we're wrapping up the last rep zone of the season next with some final thoughts on the year and the best plays of the year. It's almost time to say goodbye to this COVID 2020 season. Peace out. 
All right, some final thoughts on the season. Well, I started hosting my first show in the middle of a pandemic, unsure if there was even going to be a football season, unsure if we were even going to be able to cover the games. So my hat goes off to every single UNLV athlete and coach this year for the hundreds of COVID-19 tests you guys had to take, for the amount of sacrifice and hard work that went into the hardest year of our lives. This was an unprecedented year for college athletes, coaches, and all the freshmen experiencing their first year in college. It's been an honor to cover UNLV this season and hear firsthand from the athletes how challenging this year was, but how they never used COVID as an excuse and continue to fight, work hard, and get better each day. I will always remember my first year on the Reb Zone, and I hope this show brought you guys some joy, some light, some happiness into your homes this year. Well, goodbye 2020, goodbye this COVID season. I look forward to this summer and this fall and seeing all you fans back in the stands next year. So thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you guys in August. Enjoy the best plays of the year. See you later. Thanks for watching Fox 5 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.